The year 2007 was very special for me because I went to the Southern Hemisphere the first time to Australia to a, to a puzzle party in Gold Coast. Came across some lovely items. Here's one of the items which I particularly liked. And I really just reminded myself of it going through the 2007 briefcase. It's a, uh, they call it a totem pole. Oh well, but it, what it consists of is a stick of kangaroos all sort of locked together. And when it's upright like that, it's, well, it sticks up like a, like a totem pole, I suppose, but there we are. Anyway, it's one of these ones, rather like the snake I've got, where in order to disassemble it, you have to start with a bottom piece. Nothing else will work. All the others are locked in. I can't take the others off, they're locked in. But the first one will slip out just by pulling it gently forward like that. And there we've got Kanga, the room. Strange construction. And then that releases the next one down, and I'll pull that one back again. No, pull it forward one way or the other. Oops, Jesse. Here we are. And he's he's got a big space underneath of, of the kangaroo's body from the previous one. So that's and then the, all the other pieces come apart like that. I'll put them all on the table and show them together as a little family. It's a very similar construction to snakes, which I've got, which and I've showed before, where the snake is this way, of course, comes in sections. And uh, after the third one you pull out, there's a little a stomach and a little tiny mouse inside the snake, which is eaten. But I looked vaguely for um, a roux, you know, a little kangaroo inside one of these, but couldn't find one. So, well, they are. Anyway, there's my little family of... Have they got eyes? Yes, they've got eyes. Oh, they've got eyes both sides, actually. And there's the little family with the last one at the end. And they're all put together again in the right order. You've got to work it out how they go because they're all ever so slightly different to the pieces when they're done. So it makes a very, very nice little puzzle to play with. So that was a good find for Australia. That's that's probably my favourite one, I think, from that visit. There are a couple of you know, three other things I want to show from that year. This is a particularly nice one because I'm very fond of that type of toy called a thumb toy. Press we have a little thing and you press it from the underneath and spring is pushes it and the thing flops over. That's exactly what this does, but it's not a, a little thumb pusher in the ordinary sense. It's a ballpoint pin. Made by Disney Company. Proper little ballpoint there. To make it flop, you look vaguely for the button to push. Well, there isn't one. Is actually the biro points. So if I push this on a piece of stuff to, to save my thumb, watch him flop over. As I'm, as I'm pushing down here at the top, so it's pushing down here and he's flopping over and he does a wonderful flop back, flop forward, flop everywhere you like because it's pushing against the spring and releasing the strings which are holding the body in shape. And there's Mickey doing all sorts of extraordinary antics. Even, yes, even the arms will flop down if you hold it, the rest of the body up there. So as you're writing along, this thing's flopping away at the top of the um, of your pen as you're writing it. Nice concept there. Very well done, too. Well, well done, the Disney people. There's one here which I like. I got that from a friend of mine who makes this type of thing. It's it's one of these ridiculous things which you have to rotate. But it's, Scott Kim invented this idea of having it morphing from one thing to the other, not with a sudden flick like that from there to there, but doing it slowly and it rotates into the second figure. So starts off as the word safety, comes back, the S turns into a T and all the other letters and it becomes trauma. I'm not sure what, what the connection is between the two words, actually. It seems so different, but well. But I love that action of, of rotation of the of the of the letters as the of the letters as they go from a, a clear S into a into a T, not quite so clear. Though. Perhaps at a different angle. Anyway, it's a good one. The last item is my favourite, I think, from the case itself, because this is an extraordinary catalogue from a um, a company in the UK which sells flowers. Quite innocuous, both sides. It's just got lots and lots of flowers, but the inside has got some amazing paper engineering, which I've never seen before. So, oops, let's have a go at it. Open the lid. Inside, we've got a bit of this and a bit of that, lots and lots of blurb. But now, this is the interesting thing. When you take it back to here and you want to find out what the other pages are, you don't lift the pages, you pull. Can you see there's a little arrow here? You pull the arrow, and something quite extraordinary, unexpected happens. I'll do it again slowly. Look, each page flips over and each one shows what's inside. 
The next page flips down and it shows what's inside. The next page down, then, oh, lots of pens is there. And the last page is there. And then I'll show the thing at a side angle. This is very nice. Isn't that beautiful? And you can see the actual mechanism doing the pulling and making page after page turn. It's about five pages in a row, all doing that flip-flop, flip-flop action, almost making a breeze, actually. It acts as a fan as well. Yes, it's a bit of a fan, too. So that was an extraordinary bit of engineering, paper engineering, which I've never seen since. I just wish that they'd um, come up with more of these, because I think they're almost collectible. Never mind the catalogue and the flowers. It's the actual thing itself. It's amazing, isn't it? Good year, 2007. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.